Hello everyone, welcome back to Super Jerry 27's Nerd Cave. I have changed the name because I'm tired of saying that, and I not I don't only talk about comic books. I love comic books, I've been collecting them since 1988, and I've been playing video games since a little bit before that, so I'm a fan of both, mostly pop culture, the color red, because I'm always wearing it. Not really a Pabst drinker, but I got these like five of these for free when I was working at some shithole. And uh, it's that like so super soft cotton that's just very comfortable and breathable, so that's why I wear them. But we're not here to talk about my fashion choices. Today, we're here to talk about the spookiest, scariest PlayStation 4 games that I have in my collection that you can enjoy this October. Let's get to it! These are in alphabetical order right now, I believe. I believe. Alright, so first, obviously, I'm playing this one on my Twitch right now. Alan Wake Remastered. Um, it's the classic Xbox 360 version of the game, very well upscaled by Remedy, hopefully in preparation for Alan Wake 2, and hopefully by the time Alan Wake 2 comes out, I'll have a PlayStation 5. This next one, um, it's I paid full price for it. I pre-ordered it because I'm just obsessed with HP Lovecraft, and... On a previous video, you see the other Call of Cthulhu I have for the OG Xbox, but pre-ordered it. Who did it? Cyanide? Oh, Focus. Okay, Focus Studio. Oh, right. So there's a companion to this game, kind of. So long story short is Frogwares was doing a Call of Cthulhu game, and Focus Home Interactive did not like how that game was going, so they said, saw it off to... Frogwares when they went and made The Sinking City and then this company made Call of Cthulhu um, it's a fun game it's short, it's spooky Sinking City is better I paid full price for this and then eventually I downloaded it and just played it real quick uh, it is a $9 game, it's still fun and for those spooky nights out Call of Cthulhu, absolutely we'll talk about The Sinking City in a different video dun 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 and this this developer has very quickly become my f one of my favorite developers, and that is Supermassive Games. So obviously, I'm talking about the Dark Pictures anthology. All of these games are super fun and super replayable. And I don't know I, when I when I did my review for the Quarry, they're like the choose your own adventure books, but in video game form. And I always play them, and I need to actually start uh, this one. Well, oh, wrong one. This one, it's been about a year or two since I played it, so I like to replay it and try not to do the same mistakes. Maybe have everybody survive, you know. Uh, this one I played recently. It is fun, but the one I actually enjoyed the most was their latest one, was House of Ashes. Very, um, I don't know, just basically in the 90s, the military is looking for weapons of mass destruction which didn't exist, and um, they find something else, basically an old kingdom that is haunted by things. I don't know. I loved it. They do such a great job, and when I get a PS5, I can replay all these on the PS5 and upscale, even though the graphics look great. Uh, they don't stutter, so I can't complain about that at all. Next up is Days Gone. Um, a fun game from Ben Studios, who who graced us with the Uncharted game on the PlayStation Vita and a couple other games. I just... Too much Pabst, right? But this is a fun game. The only thing I didn't enjoy about it was the fact that you had to maintain that bike. It was just a pain in the butt. Um, I got somewhat far in it. I haven't beat it. I need to go back to it. Because um, it's a zombie game. And I want to see the ending and see everything, but... I don't know, it is a fun game. Um, just be prepared to take care of that bike a lot. Next game on my list comes from Techland, the developer of Techland that gave us the Call of Juarez games, and I believe the first Dead Island. Unfortunately, they're not making the second Dead Island, but instead we got Dying Light from them. This game isn't really... I wouldn't say it's like jump scare scary, it's just creepy. And you're more freaked out when you're doing missions about what's going to fuck you up. Um, I haven't played this in a very long time. My buddy Tom and I were playing it. We never got back to it. I'm going to have to bother him. Maybe we can go back to it. 
it is co-op, online co-op, and I think if you buy this, you can, like, free upgrade. They kept upgrading this game, like, 17 different upgrades with more playable areas and all that good stuff. Like, Techland knows how to treat their treat their customers. Naughty Dog and uh, Rockstar could learn a few things from them. Then the classics. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I've got that weather change from under, and I'm tired of pausing this video because it's going to look all choppy. But uh, the Dead Rising games um, are amazing. You can hear I haven't even opened this one yet. But, I, like, they did a pack on the PlayStation 4. Like, get all Dead Rising games with Frank West for, like, 20 cents. So they're just sealed. I hate it when they do that. This, this, one's, this one's sealed. But this was, along with Elder Scrolls Oblivion, this was the game I bought on my OG Xbox 360. And these are just fun. This, is very, this one's hard. They kind of fixed it to make it less hard. Uh, this one's a little bit easier, but I got stuck on a uh, a maniac sniper, and I have like a chainsaw as a weapon. That's you know, you don't bring a gun to a knife fight. But these are great. Um, I know Dead Rising Four is on the PS Four as well. The only one that you can't get if you own a PS Four is Dead Rising Three, which is fun. <clears throat> Kind of the weakest of the series. I enjoyed 4 a lot because it took place at Christmas time. Oh, I should stream that. Anyway. Yes, Dead Rising. Always play a Capcom zombie game. Next up is a game that probably flew under the radar for a lot of like basic horror fans. But like the hardcore Resident Evil fans like myself. And just people who have done survival horror since its inception. It's called Daymare 1988. Um, it is a, a Resident Evil clone. Um, Daymar 1988 is a third-person survival horror game that recreates the mood of iconic titles from the 80s, 90s, I'm sorry, with a fresh storyline. An incident that turns a small town into a deadly zone. Three characters to play with and little time to find the truth before its mutated citizens abruptly end your mission. Game is fun. There is one mechanic in it that I hate. Um, so if you reload, you don't reload your gun, you reload the clips and if you're not paying attention or hit the wrong button, you drop the clip full of ammo instead of reload the gun. That's the only thing I didn't really like about it. Um, and it's like, what? Hopefully they fix that. There is a sequel coming, so I'm going to have to pick that up. But if they fix that stupidity or streamline it a little better. But yeah, I'm like dropping my magazines. I'm like, I'm going to be eaten. Fuck it. You know? But it's a fun game. It is difficult. Blood and gore, intense violence, strong language. Did you know that smoking is now considered drug use? Like, how weak of a fucking nation have we become? Anyway, on to the next game. Not as spooky, but is Halloween-ish, because you can't have Halloween without the Ghostbusters. Uh, this game originally came out on the PS3, Xbox 360, and on the Wii. I haven't played the Wii one yet. I do have it. This is basically Ghostbusters 3. Um, and then Afterlife. It's fun. You basically, you, you replay scenes from the original movies, but they're kind of tied in differently to a different story. I don't remember the story because I haven't, I haven't played it in probably 10 years. But, uh, yeah, dude, all the original voice cast comes back. This was before um, Harold Ramis passed, so he's in it. This was probably his last performance as Egon Spangler. Pretty sad. R.I.P. Harold, you are missed. Now, this game, um, since the PS4 is region-free, or, uh, yeah, region-free, I picked up this real quick, Kolot. It's based on the nine hikers in Russia that were just obliterated while camping, and no one can really explain what happened to them. So you basically um, show up to research the Daitlov Pass incident. It's a walking sim. I didn't get very far in it. It kind of started to bore me, so maybe I'll try again. I don't know if I can stream a foreign game. I'll have to find that out, won't I? October is not long enough. And we're working 50 hours a week. All right, next up is the the classic and probably the last good Naughty Dog game, The Last of Us. Um, came out on PS3, and then about five years later, you get the remastered version, and then like a year and a half later at the, after that, you get the remastered Super Extra Multiverse Edition. So, uh, this is where I stopped buying Naughty Dog games, basically. 
didn't like how they did Joel dirty in Last of Us 2. Not a fan of how they treated the fans with The Last of Us 2. And not a fan of how they're treating fans with this super remastered Firefly Edition. It's like, dude, this plays just fine and it looks a lot better unless you patched it recently than the PlayStation 5 version. Naughty Dog, get your shit together. Now, this was a weird game. It's an indie game I picked up. I think I got it for like nine, nine to ten bucks off Amazon. Your dude looking for his woman uh, in a haunted hotel. I streamed it. I'll put the the playlist on the, in the in this link. But I streamed the whole thing. It's a fun game. It's another one of those like run and hide games, which I'm not a huge fan of. But this one made it work a little better. Like some of them, like with Outlast, I can't. I don't know. Maybe my vision's crap. But I can't see where I need to go in a certain part of the game, and I'm stuck in the first Outlast, which is kind of shitty. Maybe not. Now here, this this or Guardians of the Galaxy may be my game of the year, uh, but albeit I haven't gotten too many new games this year. And, you know, money's sparse. This is the last super brand new game I purchased at full price recently, and it's The Quarry. Um, I think this is super massive games, best games to date. I, I don't know. I think I've sunk 20, 20 plus hours in this to see different endings and stuff, and I still want to go back to it and see different things and get different trophies because that's who I am as a person. Great game. Pick it up. And you can't have a survival horror talk without the Resident Evil series. Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2. This is when Capcom realized that... Uh, there we go. Maybe the... Action movie Michael Bay role of uh, Resident Evil 5 and 6 wasn't the way to go. They went back to the spookier, um, you know, settings. Revel Revelations 1 takes place on a boat, and you've got legacy character Jill Valentine in it. And Chris. No. Oh, shit. I, I played this like three times. Yeah, Chris is in it. Fucking dumbass. And then Resident Evil Revelations 2 takes place like... In the same place, in two time periods, with legacy characters, uh, Claire Redfield and Barry Burton. And Barry Burton's looking for his daughter, who was with Claire Redfield. Great game. Both just amazing games. Um, waiting for that Revelations 3 announcement, Capcom. Come on. Just do it. Take my money. <clears throat> my hard-earned money. I'm also Twitch streaming this game, Stubbs the Zombie. I talked about it in the OG Xbox video. Fun game, remastered. Somehow they got the licensing for it, the, all the music, um, but it is, it's fun. It's hard, so I would suggest playing on easy. I might need to restart on my stream on easy because I'm getting my ass kicked right now in a spot. Super fun game. Now, this game I bought because I heard it from, I believe, Radical Reggie on one of his YouTube streams or maybe Metal Jesus. It's called Song of Horror. Um, I picked it up on eBay, obviously, uh, not not the not, not the American edition. Um, if you were lucky enough, I think Limited Run had a limited edition of it. Plays just fine. First chapter is great, good to go through, and then the second chapter, I got super lost. I have to basically restart the second chapter. It is a maze through the second chapter. Um, Cause you're in like a haunted apartment and it's massive and ugh, you're French, so you're an idiot. But I'm glad I kind of got I got this one because it's got some cool shit in it. It's got a Character guide and books and stuff like how they used to make video games before they became bastards. Now this one I haven't played. I kind of want to, um, obviously, because I purchased it. I think it's another one of those walking hide sim hide simulators. Those who remain. Let me read this to you. As the lights go out, the embers of darkness are stoked in the sleepy town of Dormont or Dormant. Um, confront uncomfortable horrors, keep your sanity in check, and survive the night in this story-driven first-person psychological thriller. Yeah, so it's a walking sim. But even in this, I get a comic book download if I open it, and some postcards are in here. I can hear them. So that's kind of neat. I, I don't have a manual. I believe this is Supermassive Games' first game, Until Dawn. Uh, still a great horror fest. You've got Hayden Pantier in there from Heroes, and Oscar winner, I'm going to say his name wrong, Rami Malek. Um, and I don't think anyone else of consequence, really. No offense to the actors, but this is still a great, fun game that I need to replay because I already beat it, and I want to get different endings and see people live and see people die. And then just for funsies, there's nothing more fun than killing Nazi zombies, right? Um, zombie Army Dead, Dead War 4, and then there's Zombie Army 3. 
co-op online. My buddy Tom and I went through these. It was a blast. Um, I believe we did this the first few weeks of COVID um, because all of us were trapped in our houses. So that's kind of a good memory before more shit went to hell. It's done by a rebellion. Uh, I can't remember what else they've done. But it's not that important because I'm talking about horror games, not games of prior. So, what games have I missed? I know I've got a couple games that I also do want to play. Ikai. And... Oh, shit. Oh, it's not that important. I'll talk about it somewhere else. It's another walking simulator. Something with monsters. Oh, well, everything has monsters in it. The real world has monsters in it. Especially Congress. But yes, um, what did I miss? Um, are there any games that you have played that I didn't mention or might like? Let me know in the comments. I'm always down to play a horror game. They're the best kind of games other than like... Yeah, they're the best kind of games. Share, like, follow, subscribe. I will appreciate it. Bye.